And I love YouTube. I, I'm always on YouTube um, watching something or someone. Yep. And, you know, so it's, it's definitely a different platform. And Don't get like paid you to say, watch, you though. can key right in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in this video, I'm going to introduce you to chef and catering business owner Toika Bolden Cook. Chef Toika applied for a 30 day coaching program for chefs that I'm offering, and she got accepted. The rest of this video is from our orientation meeting for the coaching program. Congratulations, Toika. You about to have your own cooking show Thank if you, you. want it. <laughs> yes, I do. So the way I like to start these is to just explain what it takes for this to actually work, to see if you really want to do it. Okay. Um, for a cooking show to be successful, you have to show up every week. You have to deliver a new episode every week, just like... Think of whatever your favorite TV show is, past or present, it's your favorite because it came yeah. on every week. And so that's what it takes with a cooking show. And what I encourage people to do is take a, <clears throat> excuse me, take a five year approach to it. Think about mm -hmm. all of the things that you want to accomplish with your cooking show and plan for it to take five years for that to happen. It will happen okay. more than likely much faster than that but when you take a five-year approach to it meaning you're going to just incorporate this into your business this is just something that you do this is your marketing when you take a five-year approach to it that keeps you from thinking week to week well nothing happened yet nothing happened yet nothing happened yet okay you got to show up for quite a few weeks before things start to happen and then some more weeks and then more things start to happen and it just accumulates in that manner so it's really a marathon we're running, not a sprint. So, you know, I, I tell people don't really don't expect anything for 25 weeks. Something may happen before okay. that. But if you're not prepared to show up every week for 25 weeks, it's probably not even start because it's, what it's going to do is just take take your time to do it. But mm -hmm. you're not going to get the results from it because you're not doing what it takes to get the results, which is to show up every single week. Okay. Uh, another another way I put it to folks is, well, would you would you do a cooking show if you can make a million dollars a year doing it? Most people say, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, are you willing to put five years into building a cooking show that will pay you a million dollars a year? Different question. You want the money, but are you willing to do the work to get the money? So that's that's the the admonition that I give to people when we start this to see if they even want to start. If you have a place in your life to fit this in, when you make a cooking show a part of your business, it is something that you do a regular activity, just like everything else you do for your business. That's how you find the success. So is that, yes. is that something that, that you're interested in still? Yes, I am. Okay. Tell me about your business. Um, I have a catering business. Um, it's called Delicious Cuisines and Catering. And so uh, in the catering business, um, I do that. Then I also sometimes I do a meal prep service. Um, but I've been really trying to focus in on the catering. I only add meal prep because there are slow periods of the business and the meal prep will help to supplement some. Um, and the catering business, um, I love it because I get, I get to be creative and um, I love cooking. I love to see people taste food and have a good time and entertain. So that's kind of how I got into it. Um, so I've actually started, um, I was just on social media and saw um something that you posted i have been watching you for quite some time i've been thinking to myself is this something that i could really do and something that um not only will it it'll enhance my business but it'll kind of give me a different platform so um i guess that's kind of where i'm where i'm at at this point can you tell me what it sounds like meal prep is not a, a an an area of emphasis is something that you kind of have on the on the side. Can you 
it, did I interpret that correctly or? Yes, um, it's kind of on the side, but I think that with the cooking show, it will it kind of build itself. Like I said, it's just something that I'm doing as a supplement um, to the catering business. I recently just started catering full time. So I had a job, I did it full uh, part time. And, um, and I decided that, you know, I want to invest in myself and make this a full time job. And so um, that's how I kind of thought about, okay, um, maybe adding something else into it will help to kind of keep the business when you when you have your slow period. So, but it's not like I'm uh, do it that I do it like on a daily basis or so. How are you, well, where are you geographically? I live in Tampa, Florida. Okay. How are you promoting your meal prep service? Um, I'm, I haven't, I did it previously. I, I did it like maybe two years ago, like right before COVID I stopped because it was, it was a lot. I was working for a full-time job catering and meal prep so i had to stop one i am going to reintroduce it again um at the beginning of the year so i haven't started but it was mostly word of mouth um i did a little bit of social media i'm not the the best person um with social media these days i don't post as much um i don't i don't think about getting my business through instagram or facebook I mostly get it through word of mouth. You said you're in Tampa? Yes. I, I'm glad I asked you this question because I thought I knew the answer and I was asking it so that the audience would know. I thought you were in Alexandria, Virginia. I, li Why, I used to I, live there. Based on looking at your website. So uh, Okay, yes. You're, I used you're in to Tampa. live there. You're in yes. Tampa now? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I think there may have been something on here in addition. That that's a we, we need to clarify that on your on your website because if I got that impression, okay. other people may as well. So there may be folks in Tampa who come across your website and they think you're in Virginia. Okay. So we want to, we want to do something about that. Okay. Um, Cause I was going to tell you, there's a huge market up here for meal prep. That can be a staple of your business and, and meal prep is recurring revenue which is the yes. the holy grail for any business, the same customer paying you repeatedly. So mm -hmm. I would encourage you to embrace it fully and and, okay. and market it effectively because which will your cooking show is going to help you do that. There is a huge demand for meal prep. A lot of people don't want to cook. You have lots of parents that are overwhelmed with job responsibilities and the kids. Yes. Meal prep is a service that sells itself. People are looking for meal prep all the time. I see in different forums and places, uh, people are asking, Do anybody know anybody that does meal prep? There is yeah. a demand for it. So if you offer it, some of those folks are going to sign up and just let you cook for them and their families indefinitely. All right. Yes. As far as the catering what type of what type of events are you looking for? Or what uh, type of catering? Because it's not just event based, but what what types yes. of uh, clients are you looking for? Um, I want to do more of the corporate. Um, I've done a few things, not a whole lot. I get a lot of wedding receptions, um, parties. Um, some baby showers, but mostly it's like weddings that I get, mostly weddings. Is that what you want? Because weddings are, it's either you love that industry or you don't want any part of it. That's 
generally the experience. Now, I used to do photography and yes. uh, pretty much all of the vendors that are at a wedding are wedding people. Yes. Anybody else, don't talk to me about a wedding. I don't care how much money you're offering. I don't want any parts of that. So are you a wedding person or are you just yes. doing weddings? Because, okay. Yes. Okay. How are you... How are you getting your wedding clients? How are they finding you? Um, they do find me on social media. Um, and a lot of it has been referrals, believe it or not. The, I'm actually catering this weekend a wedding. And the young lady was referred to me from uh, someone at my daughter's school. They ha uh, The school has a net. They do like a networking affair every year. I passed out my cards and did like, you know, a little meet and greet. And so that's how I was able to get that client. And okay. um, it's just, just by referral. Okay. So you want more weddings? What else do you want? More corporate events. Um, just uh, corporate events. They're... They're easy, like a wedding can be easy as long as you're organized and um, I've done some things to tweak my business to help me and being organized. Um, so as long as you are detailed and organized, I think for me, um, I, a wedding is easy as well as like a corporate event. Um, not a whole lot of like in between things you you deal with uh one person and you kind of explain they give you what they're looking for and from that point you can basically set it up so it's a it, it it's a lot easier to deal with a corporate job than someone with a party because a lot of times they're all over the place and um you give 10 options and then they still decide, well, I don't know if that's what I want to do. And they can kind of get frustrating. Not only that, it's the clientele. Um, I feel like a lot of people um, don't understand your self-worth um, that you put into this. You know, uh, people want a little, a lot of things for nothing. Yeah. So to speak, as you said, you were a photographer, so I know you can understand. Yeah. Um, so that's one reason why I kind of went to um, thinking about the corporate realm and also thinking about um, when you're dealing with someone in corporate, they have budgets. They already have a budget. They kind of know what they want to do or spend. I've done some uh, several of those events and, you know, uh, it's just easy to kind of manage or get through that. Even with a wedding, um, sometimes you have people who have a budget, sometimes they don't know, but it's easier to get that information out of someone in that area versus someone coming to you just, oh, hey, I was referred, I want to do a party and have no clue. So um, another reason why I thought about doing the meal prep, because it's easier. Meal prep, you, you're going to, the prices are already set. Um, like you said, it's recurring, it's easy, you know what you're going to get, and it pays for itself. Um, and I just think that um, I can kind of maneuver through some other things more so than uh, waiting and you're getting people that don't understand your self-worth because of the fact they don't, they, they want a whole lot, but they don't want to pay for it, for your services. Yeah, that's, uh, that's common across industries. And the way you deal with that is just price yourself out of those. So you can, <clears throat> with your pricing, you're going to always lose part of the market. Yeah. If you choose the low end of the market, you're going to lose the premium customer because they don't buy cheap stuff. You might be worth more, but if you give yourself a low price, they see a cheap price, which means that can't possibly be what I want. So if right. you price low, you lose the premium market. If you price for the premium market, you lose the, the broke people. So which which group do you rather get rid of? <laughs> the low so, end. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and the and the people who pay are the premium clients are actually much better to deal with. It's not just premium in terms of their payment. It's premium in terms of the experience that you have in dealing with them. Absolutely. So, um. So, yeah, we'll fix that. 
and your cooking show is a for for a food business owner a cooking show on youtube is the best way to solve that problem of having the, the low budget people and not having the premium people you want because with your cooking show you you are establishing yourself as the premium option how many how many caterers do you know who have their own cooking show not very many exactly or it's, i don't know any at all to be honest i don't know exactly any at all but you you very few and far between now if i ask you how many caterers do you know of who are posting reels and tiktoks on you know instagram and and, and on tiktok the little short videos with you know clips of the food 15 20 second videos a million unlimited of yes. those yes everybody can do that so you don't separate yourself in any way when you do what everybody else is doing but when you take yourself to youtube and you publish a full-length cooking show where people get to learn from you and experience you and see who you are and what caliber of business owner you are they can see that that's the person that i want to hire for my corporate event that's who i want to put in front of my clients you know handling our food that Absolutely. you get to establish a relationship on youtube that you don't get to establish anywhere else. And that's where you get the premium clients from. YouTube is the only platform where people go to listen to you for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, however long. On all the right. other platforms, they're there to scroll. How many videos, you know, how much stuff can I scroll through, you know, in a few minutes? That's what that's what's Instagram, that's TikTok. That's Facebook. Correct. How much scrolling can I do? People go to YouTube to watch a video that is 10 or 20 or 30 minutes or whatever. That's the only platform where they're going just to watch you for an extended period of time. So when you put yourself there, you automatically remove yourself from all of the, the cheap caterers. You separating yes. yourself and people will look at you and disqualify themselves by looking and saying, yeah, I know I can't afford her because <laughs> if she's doing all I, yeah, I'm not even going to contact her because I can't. And that's what you want. And then the other folks yes. are going to look and go, man, this lady is outstanding. That's who I want at my wedding. That's who I want at my 30th anniversary. That's who I want at my golf tournament, court catering my, my golf tournament and my, you know, in front of my high dollar clients that I'm trying to impress. I want her. That That's what a, a cooking show on YouTube can do for you. And um, and that's that's what we're going to do. We're going to define what you want. So you want more weddings. You want more corporate events. You want more meal prep. Is there anything else you want? That's it, because I put wedding and, and anniversary that kind of go all in hand in hand to me in that okay. box. And um, I think weddings, that's pretty much events. what I want. Yes. Family. Weddings, family, COVID. Okay. So, do you do you have a, a camera other than your phone, or do you just have your phone? Uh, currently, right now, I have my phone. Um, sometimes, um, so I used to live in Houston, so I still go out there. I have a clients in Houston, uh, and my son lives there. And what really made me think about this, because I remember you saying, you don't just need your phone, but my son does a podcast on YouTube where he just, he started it maybe six, four or five, anywhere between four and six months ago. He has all this equipment and I was like, oh, wow. And I remember just listening to, um, one of your emails a couple of weeks ago and you and you stated that if you can film you know a few shows in one day and i said yep. oh wow yeah i was just telling him hey i'm visiting for christmas and i told him about what i was thinking about doing and i said um what do you think about um I, you have all your equipment if i can come while i'm there can i film some shows you know it doesn't have to be every day. It can be, you know, a couple of days while I'm there, but I want to do so many shows so I could start to have content when I'm ready. And he was like, yes, you can do it. So he literally has everything in front of him there. 
um, I don't at home. I only have just my phone. Um, so if there's something else that I would need to pick up, I probably can. You said, you said that's your son, right? Yes. The the dude who you gave life to. Yes. Yeah. So not yes, he can do it. Yes, he will. All right. So yes. you, when you go to Houston, <laughs> with one day a month is what I recommend for anybody. So how, how long you plan to be there for Christmas? Ten days. I think. No, 12 days, 12 days. I would, I would recommend, I would recommend you plan a couple of, let me see. I would recommend you allocate two of those days to recording your show. And on each okay. of those two days, you're going to record six episodes. Okay. Three in the morning, three in the afternoon. Give yourself a little break in between yourself and your and your son, so y'all can just get something to eat, just chill or whatever. But get okay. your second wind, and then come back and do three in the afternoon. And if you do that two days, when you finish, you now have twelve episodes, and that's the entire first quarter of twenty twenty four. That's January, oh, wow. February, and March. That's how efficient a cooking show is as a marketing tool on YouTube. Unlike the other platforms on YouTube, you only have to show up once a week. If you show up once a week with a cooking show, that's all you have to do. That's the, that's your marketing and, and tell people that you have a, a YouTube channel, a YouTube cooking channel, mm -hmm. but that's it. As far as posting, you only need to do uh, that one, one video a week. So you record those 12 videos while you're there for Christmas and get them edited, uploaded into YouTube and scheduled because you, YouTube has a built in scheduler. So you're going to schedule those videos and you don't you're not even having to do the posting manually. You upload them all at one time, you schedule them out and then you got a video dropping every week until you run out of them. And in the meantime, you would continue recording so that you'd have you know, you always have a buffer. Uh, a catalog okay. to keep the show going. And um, so, yeah, definitely take advantage. We're, we're not going to wait until December. You're going to start okay. now. But when you go, I would say plan that trip with two days, two recording days in mind and everything that needs to go in involved in that. So if you're going to need to take some, some, some pots and pans with you or whatever, some special to your, your chef, not whatever well, you, if you flying, you're not taking no knives, but whatever you need. I, you I wanna... do take my, I actually do take my knife. I have a knife kit. <laughs> I check it in. in. I check oh, it in okay. my bag. Okay. okay. <laughs> in my suitcase. <laughs> okay. So yes, I travel with it. Okay. So then plant, go there with the intent of creating those 12 episodes and Whatever you're going to need, you know, you're going to go grocery shopping there, like plan out your recipes and all of that. You should not be figuring okay. anything out when you get there. You need to go there with yes. a plan and then you execute okay. that plan. And um, okay. and then you'll be able to come out of it with uh, with with a dozen. Um, yeah, with a dozen recipes. OK, OK. And, and I I'm probably looking. can add, squeeze in some more. I'm pretty sure because, you, you know, um, you certainly can. I can make, I can, but I'm going to, like you say, I'll, I'm dedicated to the, the six, but if I can add in more, I will. So yeah. I, I want to try to get as much as I can, as possible if I can. So that those two days are guaranteed. That's, that's what those two days are for. Those are not vacation days. Those are not family fellowship days. Those are work days where you work days. Mm -hmm. You those two work days are going to cover you for the entire first quarter of uh, January, uh, the entire first okay. quarter of 2024. OK. Um, and then after that, after you've gotten those two days taken care of, if you want to do some extra additional recipes, you know, you can everything after that is free time. So you can do what you want. Okay. If you can do some additional stuff. Go for it. OK. OK. How are people, I'm looking at your website, how does somebody place an order? 
Well, uh, yeah, I know. So my website, I, I really need to um, update some things on my website. Um, it's so this is a manual process where you're doing a whole yes. lot of work. Somebody's probably sending you an email or a text message with the list of things that they want, and then you got to add it up. That is correct. Uh huh. Yes. So and it's a lot. It's a, yeah. it's 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 we, a lot. It's, we have a me. very simple solution for this. It's called Honeycart, and it's um, it's a guy named Omar is one of the co-owners, and that's who you're going to talk okay. to. I'll send you I'll send you a link to uh. I just probably I'll just put it on screen so everybody can see it and I will drop it in the okay. description box if you want. So right now I'm talking to the, the viewers. If you okay. run a catering business and you're like Toika and you have a process where let me just put this on screen so folks can see it. This is Toika's website. And as you can see, this is basically a PDF menu. Um, these different pages that you you flip through and the way people are placing their orders right now is they go through here and they write down or well, however they want to do it the things that they well, want actually, what else what? at the top there's a button at the top uh -huh. of the website where you Order can now. go in Yes, you can click there. So which one you want me to go to? Prepared meals, corporate catering, hors d'oeuvres, which one? If you you can go to hors d'oeuvres, that's where you are currently are. Okay. And you can literally place your order from there and it will come over to me. Uh, it will come in in an email format rather, but it will it will come in that way. What if I want one Chipotle chicken? Is there a minimum order quantity for any of this? Yes. So on when you go back to the actual page, it says a minimum order of twelve as a dozen, a, a twenty five. I'm sorry, uh, as a dozen um, order that you can place in. But what if I put a one here? What happens? And you know, that's a good question. I never, I never looked at that. I know what happens. What happens is people will put whatever they want and then they hit submit. And then you're going to get an email with an invalid and your, and your, according to your process, an invalid order quantity. And then you got to tell right. them, well, nah, you actually have to order 12 of those. And so the honey cart system, this is still manual on your, on your side. And also, this is, um, and I see this a lot. I'm not picking on you. I'm using this. This is instruction for the viewers as well, because a lot of caterers do this. They will have um, different systems of various types, um, hand-built systems, or maybe even pay somebody to build something for you. And this is what I call the illusion of automation. This is really not yes. automated, because it's a manual process on your end. And what you're going to get is something that's not, this is doing, this is too much work for you. When you use Honeycart, yeah. for example, let me show you the Honeycart page for one of my other clients. So you can get an idea. And again, I'm going to put you in touch with Omar. So you can, um, okay. And, oh, right now. So she's in the process of moving to honey car right now. She has her, just her Thanksgiving menu here. We're going to move her entire okay. catalog, uh, menu here. But what you, with honey car, first of all, you have photos of everything. They click, yes. they place their order and it works like Amazon. So they go, the person will go through here and choose four sides like he, so here's an example of of the rules being enforced you have to select four sides so i'm going to try to select oh. five and see what happens choose okay. only up to four options and 
special instructions. Let's see what happens if I put only three. It took it. I guess if they only want to order three, they can, but they cannot order more. And so now let's go to the complete Thanksgiving dinner. Choose one option, fried or roasted. The fried turkey. Uh, four sides. Is there anything else? Any special instructions? So this is their opportunity to tell you anything that they want you to know. Add to order. And you see up here, we got the cart. These are the things yes. that I ordered. So everything is in here. They can add a tip. They go to checkout. So they're going to pay you. And what you're going to end up with is uh, your kitchen sheet. I can't remember the right name for it, but your list of stuff that you have to do. You've already gotten yes. paid. There's none of this back and forth. You can also have the... Um, in here, you configure your um, uh, delivery restrictions and your your delivery restrictions and your pickup restrictions. So like for Thanksgiving, for example, you can cut off Thanksgiving orders like you cannot place an order after November 20th or November, whatever day you want. And okay. for your delivery, because you're going to deliver some of these some people are going to pick up. Some people are going to deliver. You're going to have hours in there for pickup and delivery. So they can't schedule a delivery, for example, for hours outside of what, you know, you're not delivering turkeys on Thanksgiving Day. They got to get it the day before if that's what you wanted to do. Right. So all of that, everything that you want to do as a catering business owner, the Honeycart platform does that for you. It, it just everything that you wanted to do. Wow. They designed a program. They designed the platform with you in mind. So everything that you're going to need to do, instead of having to create it from scratch, you just use their platform and 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 tell it how you want to run your business, and um, and it just works way better. So that's that's why when I looked at your website and I could see because I see that a lot, um, some variation of what you have where it's a semi-automatic semi-automated process in some instances not automated at all um people yes. getting taking taking orders via text message and stuff i'm like yeah there's a, a much easier way to do that so um i will put you i have touch. a question go ahead it's honeycart integrated into the website or or um like are the two linked or is it something the, that they the, build the latter. So there's their platform, okay. which is just for the placing the order part. And then there's your website, okay. which is where you have like your about page and you're talking about different things and this and that. But when somebody's ready to place an order, they click the link and then it takes them to your Honeycart um, portal. Okay. And that's where all of your, your, your menu items are. And if you like your minimum quantity, you, I couldn't show you on that one because it's just her Thanksgiving menu. But on her regular catering menu for pretty much everything, the minimum quantity is 10. So okay. when you choose it, it all is it automatically puts the 10 in there. Like on yours, you they have to put the quantity. On hers, it puts the 10. And all you can do is click the plus button to increase it if you want, but you cannot okay. take it down below 10. Okay. And so makes sense. People can't do anything that you don't want them to do. All right. So we're gonna um uh, like I said, I'll put you in touch. And, with... and it makes sense because regardless of what you may have posted, and I've seen this very often, I could send someone to the website. They may look at uh, what the options are, but they still come back and ask the same questions. They don't read. And it does say a minimum order, but they'll still come back and ask. So if you were to try an order and it it starts out with the 25, then you know, there's nothing else that they would be able to do or put in because it's already there. And like yeah. you said, it's only a button to increase. So that makes sense. Yeah. People, they're not paying attention to anything you say. They're going to try to order. They'll order one French fry if you let them. If, if, if you don't make them order a whole order of fries, <laughs> they'll order one French fry. Um, right. So we're going to, that's going to make things more efficient for you. And this also is going to make things a lot 
more efficient for your uh, corporate catering clients. The example I just showed, like when your website is like that, when your ordering process is like that, they can just go there, add everything to the cart, see what their tally is going to be. If they need to get approval for it or whatever, like it's just going to make it very simple for them to do what they need to do. Right. If they are able to just pay directly, they can go through, place their order. They can be doing that at midnight and go ahead and place their order and be done. Or if they just need to get the tally to see what the, the total cost is going to be so that they can go, then go get approval and they can save their cart. Like this just makes things easier for them to do to, to do uh, self-service yes, ordering. So that's going to that um, that's going to um, make you a fan amongst the corporate event folks and really everybody. And that's because there's a option for meal prep. But the thing about the meal prep um, in the past, what I've done is I had to send I send an email of the order and then you you know, and then people will go on and choose like whether they want a pescatarian or a vegan or vegetarian option, and you you do that on the website, but then it would be easier if I could post the order the the menu on the website they see what they want, and like you said if it's at midnight or at three in the afternoon, someone could just go on there instead of having to. I'm waiting on someone to place their order. I have to go back and forth via email. And it gets to be a lot, you know, um, after, you know, after a while, it's like, okay, why well, you, you don't want to bother anyone, but then you're waiting for that order where if they can just go in and they look to see what's be, what's already there and what's shown and what's reoccurring, that email is reoccurring each week. It's easier for the client to, um, to go in and just place that order versus they're not waiting on me um to to post something it's already there yeah that's exactly it and you can preload your meal prep menus so you're going to have a rotation of you know just at some point you're going to start rotating the same menus and so you pre-upload that stuff and then when it's you know this week's menu you know whatever is the menu for this week you already have it you just make it available make it visible and then make the yeah. ones that's not supposed to be for this week you make those uh invisible invisible and uh and you just keep it rolling like that like every week you can send out the announcement we're you know next week's meal prep menu is up we're taking orders from you know this day to this day if you want if you want to order yes. by you want meal prep next week you got to order by x deadline so you can yes. do that do you have because you mentioned email are you are you communicating with your clients via email now? I mean, not regular, just one on one. But are you doing any kind of email marketing? Um, not really. I only I just did something for uh, Thanksgiving. I sent out um, maybe about 50, 50 to fifty five people. Uh, I did send eat my Thanksgiving menu out. Okay. to them if and to see if anyone wanted to order but that's about it it's only like if it's a, a maybe a special occasion but it's not often that i um, communicate with anyone via email okay well yeah we're gonna start doing that so your weekly email um is gonna have your weekly the new um the new cooking show episode from this week mm -hmm. and it's going to have uh it's going to uh you're going to tell them what's some highlights of this week's meal prep menu okay and this is an email list that will start to grow itself once people know about it because mm -hmm. if I'm on Toyka's emails list she's going to send me I'm going to watch a great cooking show everybody loves a cooking show and if I'm interested in meal prep, she's going to tell me what the meal prep is this week. And I'll know if I want to order it. Yes. Can you see how this is something, a list that people will want to be on? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And then that makes your life a whole lot easier. Instead of wasting time and energy posting on social media, you got your one video a week going out on YouTube, pretty much on autopilot. And you're sending out one email a week. And that's, that's really all you need. That's going to be enough 
over time to comprise your marketing and, and bring you the kind of business that you want. Yeah. It just, just, just about committing to it over time. And this is where most people fail is they don't, many things work, nothing works fast. So people try right. a bunch of different right. things and any number of those things would have worked if they would just commit to it over enough period of time for it to work. So that's what well, especially do. with being an entrepreneur um, and, and, and I look at any company that's out here, if you take companies like Apple, Dell, you know, those companies, those, I, I just remember reading about startups and how the, the time that it took and, and what people, the time that people put into, you're putting, you're investing into yourself and success doesn't come overnight. Um, and so even with me building the, my, my catering business, I originally started in Houston. When I moved to Virginia, I was there for maybe one year, but that's when I started meal prep. Someone approached me um, about meal prep and it, it was lucrative at that time. Um, I just didn't stay in the area. I ended up moving to, to Tampa, but it was very lucrative. And I had a lot of business clients um, that just heard of, heard of, heard of me, you know, through word of mouth and, um, minimum posting on social media, because I think at that time, um, Instagram, it would, you know, people were starting to use it, but it wasn't as big as it is now, but it was still working. And that's when I said, okay, Hey, I need a website. And I reached out to someone in the area and they built the website. Um, as you can see, they, and in the way that it was built, I did have a different mindset of how I wanted things to work, but that's what I got. And I don't, you know, uh, I know now I feel like it's not, as, it's not user friendly, you know, because having to go there and it, and the work that I see that I have to do on the back end, it's a lot of work. And for me, if I know it's a lot of work, I know how a client or a customer would feel um, on their end and saying, Hey, I don't want to do this. This, this is going to take too long and it takes, or it takes too much work for me. I'm going to move on to someone else where it's easier, you know, easier for me to maneuver or, uh, through their website or find out how can I place an order, you know? So for me, I think about the, the back end and I think on the customer aspect as well. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. We're going to, yeah, we're going to take the, take care of that easy honey card is going to take care of that part and as far as the marketing we're going to create a cooking show that positions you for in front of the people that you want um okay the next thing i'm going to need from you is you're going to have to record a test video where you're showing me okay Basically, you're going to position yourself in the kitchen where you're going to be doing your cooking so I can have an idea of what kind of setup you have as far as your kitchen. Do okay. you have, by chance, do you have an island in your kitchen? I don't have a, um, it's not like a complete island. It's um, kind of like a peninsula and the sink is built into the peninsula. So it's not well, like a full so island. What we're what we're going for is um, we need you to have a cooking surface where you can face the camera. So if you don't have if you okay. have an island, you can put a portable stove on it so you can face the camera. If you don't have an island, then we can get a stainless steel table or something that you may already own as part of your catering business, so that you can put mm -hmm. a portable stove on it and be able to face the camera. We got to turn your kitchen into a TV kitchen where you can cook and be facing the camera just like you are right now. Okay. Well, I will, I will figure that out. I will, okay. I will figure it out to see what I'll check to see what I have currently. If I could maneuver around it, the, the area, it's a lot of space, but again, like I said, the sink, so that may pose a, uh, an issue, but if not, I will see what I can pull together for that. Okay. And then, um, 
pick. You don't have to do this right this second, but you do need to block out a day in okay. um, November for your first official recording day. Okay. And, you know, put it on your calendar and so that nothing else ends up trying to happen on that day because you need, you know, that that's the, the first day you're going to do your first recording. And then um, okay. that's going to be very important practice for you to get prior to when you go to Houston in December. Okay. And how soon do you need the test video? Um, I mean, this, so this test video is probably like 30 seconds. So, okay. you know, this, we're not talking about a long video. I just need to, and maybe do a, a walkthrough of your kitchen on the, with the. Okay. Okay. And do you have a YouTube channel? No, not currently. Well, let me see. You have, you have a Gmail account. So you have a YouTube channel. You just haven't turned it on to. Oh, yeah, you go in. You, you go into your account, and um, okay. In the top right corner, you go into your account, go into settings or whatever. That's where you enable your YouTube channel. So that's you know all you have okay. to do is turn it on, and once you've done that, you will have the ability to upload videos, and you're going to upload that test video as an unlisted video, which means nobody's going to be mm -hmm. able to see it, and then you'll send me the link to it and then I can see what I need to see to advise you from there. Okay. So that upload video. Okay. Okay. Got it. So yeah, you, that's something that you should be able to take care of. I mean, that's like, you can do that as soon as you finish. Cause we talking about just a quick video so I can have, I can see your kitchen and then say, all right, we're going, we need to do this, this, and this. So uh, do okay. that as soon as, as soon as you can. I sure will. You got any questions about anything? Okay, so let's see here. So the official day of the recording, so I am rec recording that first um, episode, that, that first um, recording of, of the cooking show itself on that whatever day in, in November. I really want... I really want two episodes out of you. Two? Okay. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's the first official. So you want the two recording. episodes on that same day? Yes. That's that, that whole day. Okay. You're blocking it out because it's not going to go like you think it is. So you, okay. you're going to need that whole day to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what takes out most people. They try to start, folks try to start a cooking show and their first day is a disaster. And they just say, oh, no, I don't want any more of this. And um, the the issue with that is that that's how it always, that's just part of it. So if you get past that first terrible day, the next day will be less terrible because of what you learned the first time. And then the next one after that. So people, they subject themselves to the maximum pain that they're ever going to experience in the process of having a cooking okay. show. And they quit. Yeah. It gets better after that. But. They do that first day, which is a nightmare, and then they never do it again. So it's like if you were just gonna quit, just don't even give yourself the nightmare. Don't bother. If if you're not gonna work past it, <laughs> why would you subject yes. yourself to that pain? But but that's what happens to most people is they they uh, mo well most people don't start. The ones that start have that terrible first day and quit, and other people get past that first day and they do one or two episodes and then they quit. And so 99% of people don't make it to 10 episodes. That's why you don't know anybody oh, who wow. has a, a cooking show because 99% of people get taken out in those stages. I just told you that they don't get started. Yeah. They have a terrible first day. They get, or they get one or two episodes out and then they stop showing up and never make it to 10 episodes. Okay. And that's how. So it's definitely a, 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 full commitment to yeah. making sure that this yes but the payoff is huge if you show up every week and you demonstrate to the world that you're serious about what you're doing you get the major sponsors are interested in partnering with you 
You you have paying customers who are, are signing up for your various programs. You get the premium clients locally for your catering business because you have just separated yourself head and shoulders above everybody else. You, you have people contact the right people are contacting you. You're not going out looking for work. All of these things come with a cooking show when you show up enough, you know, enough times for all of these things to happen. But uh, again, folks never get those benefits because they don't show up enough times for those benefits to arrive. Nothing comes quick. Right. And then I also heard you say stories. Uh, people love to hear stories and yep. that kind of makes your time kind of go by as well. So I've been listening um, to what you're saying and, I, and I've given this a lot of thought, a lot of thought. Um, I've been really thinking about it because I just think it's something that um, it's a whole nother level. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole nother level. And and I every time you send an email, I'm reading my emails. I, just, <laughs> I look at every video. <laughs> I'm looking at the videos. So um, I spend time. I look at, you know, TikTok and Instagram. But I've kept feeling like, you know, my son was getting out. He was like, Mom, you don't post enough. You should do this. You should do that. And I said, I just feel that there's a different way. Um, I don't know what it is. This was, you know, a little while ago. And I was like, I really don't know what it is. I said, but it just has to be something different. I, I, I'm just not the, the, I have tons of content. I video all, a lot of all my events. I may not just post them all. So I have the content there. I have, there's photos, but for me to sit on social media for hours, I'm not going to do yeah. that. I'm not going to sit yeah. on there for hours. YouTube and is, I just didn't feel there's a need. YouTube is where where grown folks go to communicate, where you go to have a conversation. Absolutely. You, you don't need to be posting every five minutes. You just make one video where you're having a conversation and talking and cooking and sharing whatever knowledge you want to share about the recipe that you're preparing, as well as life in general or whatever it is you want to talk about. You have that conversation yes. in, over the course of you preparing that dish. And then you put it out there and you communicate with other grown people who want to watch something that's longer than 15 seconds long. And yeah, that's that's those other platforms aren't working for you because that's not how grown people communicate. You just, you know, yeah. YouTube is better for I think you're going to I think you're going to find yourself right at home once you start making these videos and go, yeah, this is what this was for me. This is yeah. what I'm supposed to be doing. And I love YouTube. I I'm always on YouTube um, watching something or someone, yep. and you know, so it's it's definitely a different platform. And Don't get like paid you to say, watch you though. Can key right in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm definitely excited. Um, to start this journey um and i just really feel it's gonna work one last question um i know you say other than your cell phone is there anything else that i could add or or get for uh recording purposes you, you're gonna need a um you're gonna need a microphone um okay and i'll send you a link for a mic you're gonna need a um okay probably a tripod or or a light stand or some apparatus to hold your phone okay so that you can put it where it needs to be and then and that's why you're going to need the mic because you're going to need to put the camera the, the your uh, phone far enough away from you to capture everything that is supposed to capture and that's too far for you to be speaking and using the built-in mic so you're going to want to wear a, a wireless mic so that okay. it sounds like you're right here and uh, so you're going to need a. do you have any kind of um? well, we'll see how much light you do need. But do you have a, any kind of uh, any kind of video light? Not currently. OK, well, we will see what kind of light you get in your kitchen and and go from there. You may need. OK, probably will need to buy a video light. Um. And yeah, that I'll send you a 
once I see what you what you're working with, I'll tell you what kind of light to get. But yeah, these are basic event. Like this is we had such a fantastic time. Like the, the things that you need to do yeah. to 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 do a show on your own now are so affordable. If you go back, you go back 20 years, this wasn't possible. There was no YouTube. No, it wasn't. Absolutely. And even if there were, the equipment was just insanely priced. Uh, now, anybody, first of all, the camera that you have in your phone is the only camera you really need. And instead of having to mm -hmm. spend back in the day $30,000 for a camera, a, a real high quality camera, and and the lights that you used to you know we used to have the uh the halogen lights the ones that generated heat like now we use the fluorescent lights i'm sorry the um led lights for everything but before video lights were the the halogen lights and those things throw off a ton of heat so to get the kind yes, of lighting yes, that you do. would need you stand in there cooking um and they were expensive <laughs> and heavy and they yeah. drew a whole lot of power you could trip a circuit breaker with you know the the but now we can get a light that's 10 times brighter that you can it weighs nothing it generates no heat and you can plug it in and it draws very little power so we just technology has advanced to the point where there's really no excuses anybody who wants to use video to promote their business who wants to have their own cooking show their own tv show of any kind it's really just a matter of deciding to do it because technology has just made it accessible to everyone. And I do know that some of these items um, can be found on Amazon. Um, All of them. I do know that because I know someone um, has picked these up off of Amazon. Yeah, all of this stuff. You get off Amazon, you have it at, at you know two days, and next week you got a show on TV. Because half of people watch YouTube on their television. So you put your cooking show on, on um, YouTube, some of your clients, and that's how, where you're going to get some of these premium clients, the folks who are, once they find out about your cooking show and they're watching you in their home on their big screen television every week, that's the caterer that I want at my graduation or my, my son's yeah. graduation, my anniversary, my corporate event, whatever, like. TikTok and Instagram don't do that for you. No. YouTube puts you in their house on the big screen TV. None of the other platforms yes. do that for you. That is correct. Because you can even have your YouTube on your on your cell phone. I do it all the time. I watch church um, through YouTube, and I link it with my t with, with with my TV. And it's on it's on my TV through my yep. phone, so it yep. shares the information. So, yeah. So you're one of the people watching. I can't YouTube do that with the other platforms. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, so okay. now that's going to be you putting something on YouTube that people are projecting onto their TV. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is record the the uh, video of my kitchen. Uh, I will go in and enable my YouTube channel and then upload that information to the YouTube channel. Yep. Make it okay. unlisted. Got it. Okay. Got it. All right, Toika. You're dangerous now. You got your homework. Get to work. I'm going to do that. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> All right. You're welcome. I appreciate your time and I appreciate right. you choosing me. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for, for applying and, and doing what you're doing. Take care. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. So what you just saw with Chef Toika is someone who already has all the ingredients she needs. She just didn't have the recipe to put it all together. And that's normally what I see with food industry professionals. You have everything you need except a plan for putting it all together efficiently that allows you to work smart and not hard. And you also need accountability from someone like me to make sure you stick to your plan and do what you're supposed to do. The food business is a hard business, but there's a lot you can do to make it less hard, like using the right software to process your catering orders, so you're not doing it all manually and using a cooking show on YouTube to simplify your marketing so you can get premium clients reaching out to you instead of you spending a lot of time and energy and money trying to pursue them. If you're a food industry professional, a professional chef, a caterer, a restaurant owner, a food truck owner, etc., and you want a strategy session to help you figure out how to use a cooking show to work less and make more money, use the link in the description box to schedule a meeting with me just like Toika did. 
Over the next few weeks, we're going to build a cooking show that delivers everything that Toika says she wants, so be sure to subscribe and follow along on her journey. And if you're a food industry professional, you might want to use the link in the description box to schedule a strategy session of your own, because like I said earlier, you don't get paid from watching YouTube videos, you get paid by creating them. You can watch Toika change her life, or you can get to work changing your life. In 12 months, you can completely change your life with a cooking show, but that 12 months doesn't begin until you get started. How are you going to feel if you check back in a year and Toika has 50 episodes and she's making money from her cooking show and you still haven't gotten started? That's what will happen if you don't get started today. Running a food business does not mean you have to work yourself to death, but your life will not change until you do something to change it. Contact me when you're ready for change. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.